This is KTSM 9 News Today. Good morning, Borderland. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining us for KTSM 9 News Today. I'm Jay Russell. Andrea Chacon has the day off. We're going to go back to Selena for a check of the weather and also go live out to our reporter, Carla Draxler. But first, we're going to get to today's top stories. Okay, starting things off today, the CDC. Well, they got a lot of things going in on. They could sign off on Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for ages 12 to 15 years old. And the CDC Advisory Council on Immunizations practice is expected to meet today. During the meeting, they will review data and provide an anticipated final approval for vaccines for individuals 12 to 15. Now, if approved, the vaccine will be available just in time for middle and high school students to return to school this fall. Local high school districts and area providers are teaming up to get as many students vaccinated as possible. El Paso ISD says it's opening the Vaccinate Before You Graduate program to include students 12 years of age and older. EPISD students can register online for the shot. Socorro ISD will also hold a vaccine event over the weekend at the district's police department where students 12 and older can go. The thumbs up, we'll send out our PR to everybody. So that just in case you're near hospitals of Providence or you're near immunize El Paso or on Saturday, if you're going to be near our police station, you could sign up and we could get anybody 12 or older. A spokesperson for YSD says that the district is partnering with the hospitals of Providence to help students get vaccinated. Providence Children's Hospital said it's now working to pre-register ages 12 to 15 for the COVID vaccine. The hospital is also awaiting approval from the CDC. Parents can register their child by using the pre-registration link. The families who pre-register on the site will receive a link to schedule their child's vaccine date and also the time. Also happening today, the city of El Paso will be hosting a vaccine pop-up event as well. It's going to take place from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Birmingham Charter School on 785 Southwestern Drive. Currently, the city says it is providing vaccines to individuals 16 age and older. And also very important what's going on too. We're continuing to raise the awareness right now of Mental Health Awareness Month. This is something that's going to be going along all May. And today we're going to be talking about postpartum depression. It's a condition that many moms don't know how to talk about. KTSM 9 News reporter Carla Draxler is live in downtown El Paso right now with the story. Good morning, Jay. Well, I talked to a mom of a two-month-old, and she tells me that she just loves her baby, and she's also a first-time mom who went through her pregnancy during the pandemic. But she shared her story and tells me that she had some trouble coping with her feelings and dealing with being a first-time mom during this time. Now, according to the CDC, one in eight women in the United States experience postpartum depression, a depression that comes after having a baby baby, often lasting longer than the usual baby blues that is resolved after a few days. Symptoms of postpartum include crying more than often, feeling of anger, feeling numb or disconnected from your baby, or feeling guilty about not being a good mom and doubting you can't take care of your baby. Casey Wickstrom, a first-time mom, says she struggled finding her own identity after having a baby and hopes talks about postpartum depression become more common would like for you know other moms and new moms out there to be able to say hey I'm struggling and I need somebody to talk to and I need somebody to listen to me without making me feel like I'm a bad mom or that I'm doing something wrong or you know that I'm messing up my kid or I'm messing up being a mom because I'm struggling. CDC states postpartum depression is treatable and should be addressed to your health care provider who will then refer you to a mental health professional. And then stay with us for another 30 minutes because I will tell you more about postpartum depression and share the experience of a first-time mom. Reporting live in downtown El Paso, I'm Carla Draxler. Back to you very important topic. Thank you, Carla. It is 6.06 on this beautiful morning. Now, moving across Texas, talk about getting your morning started on the right foot. One high school track athlete making no excuses during the race. He goes by the name of Walker St. John, and he faced adversity, and he conquered it as well. Take a look at this. John coming down the finish line in the 5A 1600-meter state championship heat. 
with no shoe. John says that another racer unintentionally stepped on his foot with about 600 meters left to go and he lost his shoe. But the Grapevine High School student did not stop. He went on to capture that gold medal. A moment of relief for John as he crossed that finish line. You know, it, it was scary. Um, you know, first of all, because I was worried that I'd get spiked, and then second of all, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to finish. I mean, there, there's a brief moment you're like, should I even step off? You know, should I should I try to fix it? But, I mean, maybe in a 5K you might do that, but in a, in a mile you don't have time, so you just have to roll with it. I love that mentality. You got to roll with it. Too soon to tell if the nickname Shoeless St. John will stick. Selena, what do you think about that? Wow. Wow. <laughs> and my thing is, okay, the guy who stepped on his foot that got the shoe off, I bet you if he wouldn't have won, he probably would have felt really bad, oh. you know? Because I, I would like to but. hear from him, like, come on, man, you, you got to watch your feet out there. This And that's a yeah. long run, too. I used to cover sports. I mean, I did the 200 in high school, and I barely made it past the finish line, so that's 1,600. I couldn't do it. Did you run in uh, high school? I, I, I did not. I, 